or the purpose of this is to show you the straw. So I've just used this thing, I wiped it down a little bit, cleaned it up, and I was gonna show you, you know, how this thing worked now that we've used it one time. But, uh, you know, we sh this thing's got some small threads right here, and when you're putting this plastic sheath on, you just slide it down and thread it on like that, it keeps it in place. All right, now the straw is all the way on the other end, we'll bring it back, it's right here, like this, okay? Now it comes out, of the tank, one end's clamped off, they've, they've heated it up and mashed it closed, it's sealed. The other end has these two little cloth top corks in right on this side right here. So you cut off the sealed end and stick it first into this uh, sheath and then you slide this over, pull this back, let's see, you slide this over like this, just like that, just like so, and then you push it on up, okay, you got to be sure that you're plunger here is not all the way in, otherwise you could force the semen out by mistake. You want to pull your plunger way back when you're loading this thing. I even took it out when, you, when I was showing you guys how to do it. But, uh, and I'm going to take it and I'll load it on a new one just to show you what it's like. Here's a new one that I showed you earlier. It's already been contaminated. Um, sterility is very important for all that you're doing here. You don't want to uh, get a bunch of germs and, and give the old girl an infection or something like that. So. We wash all this equipment with soap and water and alcohol. It's just very important. But uh, So here's a new one right here. You'll take it just like that. There's a little blue thing there. Uh, these, these will actually be on this side. I'll just turn it around like I just cut it off. I just snipped off the end. Your uh, little corks are on that end, okay? You just start it right there like that, okay? Push it up to you about that far. And then you can thread it like so. like that, all the way up, and you push it forward, thread it here, okay, and you can push your plunger forward until you feel just a little bit of tension, you feel it touch that, be right there, you can feel it touch that straw and you stop, and you stick the whole thing in your shirt, by leaving it in the bag and putting it in your shirt, it's still sterile on the end, okay, and um, some people even take the bag and stick it in, and then when they get inside, they use the other hand to, to break through the bag like that. I did that once, and I wound up squirting the semen in the bag. So I made every mistake possible, I guess. But you know, it's working for me. So <laughs> I just pull the bag. I pull it out of my shirt, and I leave the bag in my shirt. And then I sometimes, if there's a lot of feces around a vagina, I'll use a paper towel, I'll keep two in my shirt pocket, I'll wipe her vagina down. This time wasn't that bad. It came out after I got in. It's sometimes it's a good idea just to rake the compost out before you get started. But when I first stuck my hand in, it felt wide open and clean. But some passed anyway. You don't want to get feces into a vagina and cause infection. So, uh, but that's what the straw looks like. Now I say these straws, I have a little book in my, my planner, you know, and I, I know the dates that I inseminated my cows and I actually tape that straw. Can't get it out now. I actually tape that straw right in my planner. And it's got uh, the, the, the name of the bull, numbers, and all this registration and all kinds of things on it to tell you a little bit about the bull. If you want to go online, probably find I never have, but I just told the ABS representative what I was looking for. And you know, for a small farm like me, I just, I mean, I, I was lucky to even find a bull at all. And I just wanted, if I could find one that was a Jersey, that was good. Find one that had, you know, four legs and was tall enough to mount my cow. I didn't have a choice on, you know, getting this. This way I got really good registered semen. I have a chance to really improve my herd. So even if I'm breaking even with you know not having a bull, I'm getting a much better specimen of a of a cow, and I've got a few, few little heifers around here now that I inseminated last year, and they turned out fine. They're about four months old, and I think uh, getting rid of the bull and doing this and spending a thousand dollars and learning how to do it was well worth it. It was a new skill, wasn't that hard to learn. Um, I should probably draw some pictures of that uterus, what you're looking for, but it's just a tunnel, and at the end of that tunnel, in the vagina, you've got an upside down bowl. And around the edge of that bowl is what they call the cul-de-sac. And you can get your syringe stuck there. You have to pull it back and try to find the hole on the top. It's kind of hard. But you use your left hand to grab that fundus, they call it. That's the hard part. It feels like a chicken neck or, you know, it's firmer than anything else in there. And you try to use your left hand and hold on to that. You don't want to squeeze it so hard that you close that hole up. But you're trying to use that uh, syringe and find your way in that hole and hopefully squirt it within a few first inches of... Uh, the beginning of the uterus. And uh, you know, if you can't find it and you just squirt it right there around the bowl of fundus, I mean, it's better than nothing and it probably works. I mean, you know, God's in charge of that, not us. We're just trying to help it along a little bit. She can still get pregnant. 
So, but ideally, you'd like to put it inside that hole and inside the uterus just a little bit. And I guess the problems you could have is if you went too far, you could actually poke a hole in the intestine or poke a hole in the uterus or, you know, go through the, the vaginal wall and puncture something and cause some problems, peritoneal problems. But you need to learn a little bit about anatomy. And female human anatomy is really very similar to cows. So that's a good way to learn. If you can't find a, a book, you can always find a used college book that gives you a few pictures of female anatomy because it's pretty much the same. Cycles are the same. Temperature is the same. They're just, uh, they're very similar. So, uh, uh, all right, this is the cutter. And, uh, I wash this with alcohol every time I use it. It's just an idiot-proof way to cut the straws off when you're in a hurry and a little nervous and stressed. It's, a, it's worth the two bucks or whatever it is. It's just a blade that slides along on a spring. It's cut at an angle. This is the back side of it. What we do is we turn it around stick it in the hole like so and then mash the thing and it just cuts it for you right there the, the deal is to be sure you cut the right end so you know the one end's got the corks the other end's mashed flat cut off the mash flat and leave the corks okay and then put that the open the end you cut off put it in the sheath first i've made all these mistakes so wasted quite a few straws learning just mostly because i'm nervous you know i got cows over here stomping around i don't have a real nice shoot i don't have any shoot i'm laying stuff on the ground trying to keep the cow standing in one place so uh, just don't be nervous. Read about it really good. Maybe go over your notes. I don't do this, but once every three or four months. So I, I really, you know, how good can you be at something that you do so seldom? But uh, I, I did four cows in the first year, and I think I used seven straws, and three of the four took. So I'm pleased with that. And like I said, the, that one I just did, she took the very first time I ever tried it. And I think that first straw I used on her, I cut the end off before I put it in the thermos. I had to throw that one away because you couldn't heat it up now. So I had to do another one, but that's the way it is. All right, and the lights on the thermos, uh, they're right here. It's got a red light back here and a green light. And you just put tap water in it from the, uh, you know, from the garden hose or something. Uh, if you come out here, you're in a hurry, you don't want to wait for it to heat up, and you put warm water in it, it might be a lot hotter than 98 degrees. So I would be very careful about doing that. They don't recommend it. They say not to, and, I, and I, I've done that before, made a mistake. I won't ever do it again. I just put water from the garden hose on it. Today it's 90 degrees, so it's very close to the temperature I needed anyway. If it's 110, it'll also be green. All it's telling you is the water is above 94, 98. It could be way too hot. So if you put water in there, it's out of the tap or something that's warm water. It could be a lot hotter than you need. And after about 90 degrees, it'll just about kill all your semen. So just be patient and let it heat up on its own. And then you can check it with that little piece of plastic in there. See, it's, it'll glow and tell you. See, we're at the optimum temperature is between 98 and 94. 94 is what you want. See it right there, 94? Oh, okay. So, we're ideal. I left it in there for one minute. No more than three minutes maximum. But the ABS rep, he came out. Uh, I told him what I wanted to do. He didn't laugh at me. He just, you know, told me what it was going to cost. And, you know, I wasn't wasting his time because, uh, I mean, I was one guy on a small farm. He was willing to do it. So uh, he set me up, you know, and, and he inseminated a cow. I picked a day when I knew a cow was going to be in heat. So he didn't really give me a class, but he did it and let me watch and kind of walk me through the process. And um, it, was, it was a great way to get started in this. And I, like I said, I think it's worth it. And now that, you know, I, when I looked online, looked on YouTube, all I found was, you know, people in South America weren't speaking English and some guy talking about it but not really demonstrating it. So I hope that this video helps and hope to get somebody you know, started and, and get you encouraged. It's like me, you've never even seen the equipment now, at least you know what it looks like. And uh, the tank, I think, was around 600. The thermos was about 125. The book was about 25. The syringes are about 35. And the straws of semen, the non-sex semen can be as cheap as $8. And the most expensive I bought, the sex semen, was $30. So uh, I've got four heifers. So I, I think it's well worth it. So uh, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it.